The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Captain Bob Smith, Director of Testing. Captain Rob Smith with BoatTest.com. Today I'm on Sea-Doo's 180 Challenger SC. With the 180 SE, you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of room on board. You're going to have a lot of features on board that you're not going to pay extra for. And you're going to have something that the family can enjoy. So if you'll come down here and join me, we're going to take a look at all these features and many innovations that sea has on board. The 180 Challenger SE is designed to break you into the boating life with room to enjoy and performance that responds with the nimbleness of a cat. Of all the positives a direct drive boat offers, Few stern drives can touch the agility of the direct drive boat when it comes to on the water handling. That is bound to send a thrill through your system and impress everyone on board. At the stern we've got much of what you normally see on runabout. We've got an integral swim platform. You've got a storage box on the starboard side that's very deep and goes back underneath the swim platform and underneath the seat. On the port side you've got access to your batteries and your battery switch. They do have a center walkthrough. That's a little bit more stable and easy to do. Step right into the cockpit. The stern bench is a three across seat with room for three average size adults to relax. The center seat lifts up for access to the engine compartment where you can do your daily pre-launch checks. The oil dipstick, air filter and coolant bottle are all within easy reach. While the cockpit is typical in shape and designed to many runabouts, you'll find a bit more elbow room largely due to the direct drive system taking up much less room than a typical stern drive unit. There are bucket seats and wrap around windshield, but at the dash you have a surprise. The 180 Challenger SE has an all-digital dash. This dash takes up less room and delivers more information than any standard runabout I've tested. Over on the port side, the stereo is an upgrade from normal as well. It's a satellite-ready AM, FM, CD, and MP3 jack. Of course, in the floor is a large sole locker for your boards and large gear. One feature I've learned to appreciate are the clips that keep the bimini down when you're towing your boat down the road. The bow seats up to three, but the surprise here is that they have a standard bow filler cushion set that has its own dedicated storage in the peak. Now you don't have to waste valuable storage space in the sides or back for a filler cushion. There's even a filler canvas piece to block chilly air that snaps into place under the walkthrough in the windshield. Sea-Doo's 180 Challenger SE measures 17 feet 7 inches length overall and 8 feet 2 inches across the beam. She weighs in at 1968 pounds and only draws 12 inches. She has a fuel capacity of 28 gallons and an oil capacity of just under 1 gallon. Designed to seat 8, her total capacity is 1,440 pounds of people and gear. With three passengers on board and nearly a full tank of fuel, I found the 180 Challenger SE simple to operate and agile as Sea-Doo claimed. She's on plane in 3.9 seconds and up to 30 miles an hour in 7.8 seconds. Her best cruise speed was at 24.7 miles per hour and 6,000 RPM for a range of 74 miles on a full tank of fuel. She reached a maximum speed of 43 miles per hour at 7,800 RPM. Well, I hope I've been able to show you some reasons why the 180 Challenger SE from Sea-Doo may be a good choice for you. You do end up with a lot of space inside the cockpit. You do have the advantages of low maintenance of a direct drive system. If you're looking to get into bow riders, be sure and take a look at the 180 Challenger SE from Sea-Doo.